This video is in four parts, aiming to explain what standing waves are, how they're made or formed, the different patterns they can create, and why they should be important. To demonstrate the waves, I'm going to use all these rods, which are connected together with fishing line. And secondly, I'm going to use a long elastic cord, which has been strung with extra weight. By holding the line of rods tight and wobbling them from side to side, I can produce in it a wave which seems to be fixed, fixed in position. This is a standing wave. Now I can change the pattern of that standing wave by wobbling it backwards and forwards a little faster or a little slower. Similarly with the elastic cord. The oscillation is fixed, it's standing in one place, hence the term standing wave. We're going to examine the physics of these waves by splitting up the action into little bits. Here's a single wave going down the rods and back again. Watching this action slow down, watch the reflection. The wave that is reflected is inverted, it is reversed. The rods are in the opposite direction. Not only is the wave going in the opposite direction, the rods are inclined in the opposite direction. On reflection, the wave has undergone a phase change of a half wavelength or 180 degrees. A crest has become a trough and a trough has become a crest. That's the first thing to remember. Next, let's send down a pulse of waves followed very shortly after by another pulse of waves. So the reflected wave meets the second one. They cross over and pass through one another. But let's look again at what happens at the instant they meet. Here's one coming back and freeze it and for an instant there is almost nothing there. And then again, the waves pass through one another. But here, if you watch carefully, the two waves meeting make a larger wave, just for an instant. So what happens if we keep on setting waves down and the reflected waves keep on interfering with those? Well, we seem to get a constant pattern. Let's have a look, see how that works. So this is the wave that is traveling from left to right. And the reflected wave travels from right to left. Putting these together, the waves meet one another. And when they meet, they affect one another. They interfere with each other. And when they interfere, they combine. So we have one wave traveling in one direction, one in the other. And the combination is shown by the black wave. And if you notice, that's staying in a fixed position. So how does this work? Well, let's take this one instant where the waves meet crest to trough. The crest of one tr wave fills into the trough of the other. And the result is they cancel out. This is called destructive interference. In the opposite of this, the waves meet crest to crest and trough to trough. When they do that, they add to one another. They make a much bigger wave, that is the wave in the black. This is called constructive interference. So returning to the animation, you can see these extremes. At the point where they meet trough to crest, the resultant is zero, destructive interference. At the point where they meet crest to crest and trough to trough, the result is a large wave. That's constructive interference. The different patterns of standing waves depend upon how fast the end is twisted backwards and forwards. The frequency, or in the case of the elastic cord, how frequently the end is shaken. The input frequency has to produce a wave which has a wavelength of exactly double the length of the piece of wire or string. That is, obviously I suppose, that the length of the wire is precisely half a wavelength. This frequency is called the 
fundamental frequency, sometimes the first harmonic. If we exactly double the frequency, then the second harmonic is produced with two loops within the string, like this. This is the second harmonic, as is this. And by shaking it faster still, the frequency is higher and the wavelength is smaller, and therefore more loops can be fitted into the same length. As you may have guessed, with three loops, this is the third harmonic. So where there are two loops, the length of the string or the rods is exactly equal to one wavelength. Where there are three loops, the length is exactly equal to one and a half wavelengths. So for a standing wave to be produced, the system has to be either a half, one, one and a half wavelengths, a multiple of half a wavelength. A couple more things that you might well need to know. The fixed points of the standing wave, the places where the wire doesn't seem to move at all, are called the nodes. And the places where the system or wire moves most are called antinodes. But a final reminder that what we call a standing wave is actually a dynamic system, interference of two waves moving in opposite directions. Well, for a start, every single musical instrument, wind instrument, percussion, or string. In every one of them, whatever it is that vibrates has to do so with a predictable standing wave. The rate of vibration will depend on factors such as the weight of whatever is vibrating, the tension, and the size. In engineering, all structures will vibrate. They have a fundamental frequency. If the input and energy matches that fundamental frequency, then that is resonance, and it's quite likely to cause that structure to fail, as in this famous example of the Tacoma Bridge. And there are many YouTube examples of buildings either surviving or collapsing after swaying at their fundamental mode in a standing wave. Thank you for watching. There are notes which you are free to download, available on the website.